think about the distributive property, and it's quite a useful property, I think, and also fun to play with, is to think about area. And in each of these cases, they're asking us to write equivalent expressions to show two different ways to find the area of each rectangle, use the ideas of the distributive property. So let's look at the first one, and I think we'll understand. So notice this rectangle is really 7 by 15. So to find the total area of this rectangle, we could write 7 times 15. That's one way to write it. Another way to think about it is to look at the smaller rectangle inside. We have a 2 by 15 rectangle here, and then a 5 by 15 rectangle here. So 7 times 15, another way of finding this area would be 2 times 15. Add it to 5 times 15. And that's the distributive property. Really what we can what we can say is that 7 is just like 5 plus 2. Right? To get 7 to begin with, I just added 5 and 2. And we multiply both of those by 15. Using the distributive property, we distribute the part that we're multiplying. We distribute that multiplying part to each number. First, 15 times 2, which we have right here. And then we're going to add that to 15 times 5. And that's the idea of the distributive property right in the picture, right? We're just adding 15 times 2, this part, to 15 times 5, this part. And you can see in the picture, that'll give us the same thing as 15 times 7, right? Either way, we get the same area. Either way, we get 105. Not so easy to see with the algebra at first, but it's representing the same thing. The next case, look at this. We have a 20 times by 6 rectangle. So we could write 20 times 6 and get 120. Another way of thinking about it is to split this thing up. This is an 8 by 6 rectangle. right? 8 times 6. And, and then this one over here is what? Well, it's a 12 by 6. So we could find the area of each of those rectangles, right? Add them up, and what do we get? We get 120, so we get the same thing. Which means that 8 times 6 plus 12 times 6, right? Uh, I can write it right here. 8 times 6 plus 12 times 6 is the same thing as 20 times 6. And again, I see that because we have 12 and 8. Add those two up, you get 20. So you can think of 20 times 6 as 8 plus 12 times 6. You can get at this problem by using this distributive property, which is right here. Right? 6 times 8 and 6 times 12. It's going to be the same thing. And all the distributive property is saying is look at this picture, right? 20 by 6, this whole rectangle, is equal to 8 by 6 plus 12 by 6, these two smaller rectangles. In part C, uh, we notice we have these four smaller rectangles. So let's work this way now. This is a 2 by 2, so 2 times 2, plus, let's add this one next, this is a 13 by 2. And then we have this one right here. What's that? That's well, that's 13 by 5. And what's this one here? Well, this is 2 by 5. If we added up all those rectangles, the smaller ones, they all combine to make this large rectangle. And a large rectangle is really a 15 times by 7 rectangle, right? 2 plus 13 is 15. 2 plus 5 is 7. So it's 7 times 15. So how does 7 times 15 equal all this stuff down here? Well, in past examples, we took one number, like, like 7, and broke it into 5 plus 2, or 20, and broke it into 8 plus 20. Notice here we're breaking 15 into these two numbers, 13 and 2. And we're breaking 7 into these two numbers, 2 and 5. So amongst these numbers are the split up between 15 and 7. And originally you might write it like this. 15 is written as 13 plus 2. So instead of 15, write 13 plus 2. And that times 7, well, that's 5 plus 2. And we might not get too much into it here, but this is the same thing as this. And we're going to use, oh, I guess I'll just say it, the distributive property also works here. First we distribute 5. So 5 times, well first I should say we could distribute 5. 5 times 13, right, we have it right here. Even though it's in different order, it doesn't matter because we're just adding across all these expressions. The order doesn't matter. 
And then we have 5 and 2. We don't want to forget that right here. And then we distribute this number, 2 times 13, and then 2 times 2. Right, the distributive property is also being represented here. Now, it's not so easy to follow with all of these expressions, but it's very easy to see in the picture. Let's try and remember that all these algebraic expressions have a picture behind them. And the picture is just saying, look, these 1, 2, 3, 4 rectangles, add them all up, and you get the big rectangle, the 7 by 15. Or you can break them down into their smaller areas and then add them all up. And that's what this is saying here. Take the 2 by 2 the 13 by 2, the 13, the 13 by 15, by 5, excuse me, and the 2 by 5. Find each of those areas and add them up. And that's the distributive property. It shows that. And we can even use it, it's very useful, of course, with, with algebra. So in this case, we have x plus 2. That's this side length right here. If I add them up, I get x plus 2. I don't know what x it is, but if I knew if I add them up, I get the whole side. That times 14 is the area x plus 2 times 14, right, because 14 is right here. To deal with this, I could say, oh, well, well, this rectangle down here is a 14 by 2, so we distribute the 14 by 2, and then we add it to what? Well, what's this rectangle? This rectangle is 14 this way and x this way, so 14 times x. I'll put it, I'll use a dot because it's confusing there. Dot meaning multiply. So notice, um, this allows us to deal with an expression like this. If we have 14 times x plus 2, we don't know what x is, we can still distribute the 14 to each part and rewrite it in a different way that might help us solve it. Alright, hope that helps.